Welcome back to another episode of Heavy Hell Nation. My name's Eric. Now today, I'm going to be answering the question that I get asked on a regular basis. You know, a lot of truck stops on the comments on here, and it's a big secret. How to become a heavy hauler. Alright guys, before I get into the story and and how to become a heavy hauler and everything, I just if you guys if you guys like watching heavy haul videos or trucking videos in general, I do a lot of vlogs and a lot of a lot of videos on on all the heavy haul stuff that I'm doing out here and and how I'm growing out here and becoming bigger. So if you want to see more stuff like that, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring the notification bell so that way you can be notified when I put out my next videos. Before I get into how to actually become a heavy hauler, I'm gonna tell you guys my story and how I became a truck driver first and, and how it gradually moved up to me hauling this stuff here. I don't have your typical story. I don't I, I didn't have a dad that was that was a truck driver or a grandfather that was a truck driver or anything like that or anyone in my immediate family to watch or look up to or anything. So really this was more of a sudden and spontaneous thing that happened. I I was uh, about eight years ago. I was actually working in a in a office, and I, I went to school for mechanical engineering. So I was I was sitting down at the desk one day, and I just I walked into my boss's office. I couldn't do it anymore, man. I I, I was not going to spend the rest of my life in a cubicle, staring at a computer. It just it, it's not me. So I walked into my boss's office and I told him, I said, I'm done, I'm out of here. Walked out. What I ended up doing was uh, I got home and obviously, I mean, obviously I still had bills to pay and things to do, you know, without money coming in, without a job. So what I did was uh, I looked on Craigslist and I came across a company that was actually paying for CDLs for, for me to go to school, basically, to get my CDL. And I said, oh hell, I mean, I'll give it a try. I'll, I'll see, what, see what it's about. I'll find another job eventually afterwards. You know, eight years later, still out here doing it. But, uh, but what ended up happening was uh, I went there and I went to the school and I actually, I actually really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed driving a truck. I, it, it almost came natural to me. Now, I went to a company called Stevens Transport. That was my first company. I did about, I, I don't know, a little less than a year over there. And it was driving me crazy being told when I could go home, where I had to go, stuff like that. So I ended up, I ended up leaving them and that's when I ended up buying my first truck. And I, I bought a truck and a trailer. Now, I'm not saying that I did this right at all by any means. But I ended up, uh, I'm sorry if that wind is, the wind's obnoxious right now, man. But I ended up uh, buying a, a truck and a flatbed and decided to start my own authority with, remember, less than a year of experience and not having anyone in my immediate family to call and, and ask for help or, you know, I, I had no idea what I was doing really. I just thought I, I was young, I thought I knew everything. But uh, in reality, what ended up happening was about a little less than a year of me running my own authority, I pretty much ran that square into the ground. Just no experience at all. And uh, ended up wasting a lot of money, a lot of time. There was, there was times that I was fighting with my fiance and arguing with her because we just didn't have the money to do things because I was, we were broke, man. I had, I had nowhere else to go. So what ended up happening was, uh, I ran across a company called Eagle Logistics. Now, Eagle Logistics was a sister company off of uh, Celadon. You know, everyone knows Celadon. They just went out of business here not too long ago. So, obviously, you can see where this story is going. Uh, it was not a very, very smart business plan behind that company. They had one, one customer, not, not multiple customers. They had one. And that was a uh, Toyota forklifts up there in Indiana. 
and that's all I was running for I think I stayed with them for almost a year maybe maybe a little more than a year but that's all I was running and, and I was making money but I wasn't making the money that I should have been making that I that I could have that I had the potential to make now I still am at a very very big disadvantage because I still have a serious lack of, of experience at this point because now you know I went from working as a company driver for a starter company as I would call them uh, to running my own authority and, and not doing very well at that and then going to a, a owner operator company that I leased on to called Eagle Logistics and that's that's all the experience up to this point that I really had now it wasn't until I uh, like I said, I was with Eagle for about a year, year and a half. And then it wasn't until at, at the end of that point, I was running flatbed for them. Actually, I was running a Conestoga trailer, which is, I don't know if you guys know, but it's a, basically a flatbed or a step deck. They come either way. And then they've got basically a tarp side, like a curtain side that rolls forward and backwards. And you get the picture. But uh, what ended up happening there was I ended up meeting someone and talking to someone who who basically mentored me. Now, I'm not gonna mention his name because he's, he likes to stay to himself and, and that's his business. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not out here to put people out there or anything. But this, this guy, I, I owe my whole trucking career to. He, uh, he taught me basically everything from ground zero all the way up to, to how to run my truck efficiently and how to make money while doing it. Now, I ended up going to the company that he was at, which was Jones Motor. Jones is a very good company. I actually really liked Jones. Um, I was with Jones for quite a while, actually. Uh, I was running a step deck, a low pro step deck there, and uh, ended up doing a lot of oversized stuff because I, I saw it. I wanted to be into, into doing this stuff. I wanted to be doing bigger stuff. My, my goal was to keep getting bigger. Now, I, every every time an oversized load popped up, now, I'm not even gonna lie, I took cheap loads even at that time because I just wanted the experience. I wasn't worried necessarily about the money at that time, I was worried about the experience so I could eventually grow and be, be doing bigger things. So, basically, I ended up going to Jones, I was there for quite a while. Uh, I built I built a pretty pretty solid business plan at Jones and I was doing very well there but uh I ended up I bought a new truck a uh, pickup truck not a semi I bought a new a uh, new pickup truck and uh, I, I drove it one mile from the dealership I, I stopped at a red light and some some teenage girl texting on her phone ran into me at 65 mile an hour and messed up my back really bad and I ended up uh sorry that was a bug I ended up uh working for a little while longer in the truck and everything but it ended up starting to get really hard for me to sit and and, and drive for long periods of time because my back would start hurting really bad it ended up my lower my lower back I've got I've got multiple discs in my lower back that are actually going in opposite directions and it's just, it, it was getting painful. So I, I ended up driving a truck for a little while longer and, and my fiance ended up telling me, she's like, you just need to come off the road. And I, I, I really, <laughs> I, she is a uh, very very supportive. She's been supportive of everything I've ever done, man. I mean, since our relationship started, she she jumped on a semi with me, drove around the country with me for quite a while. And then uh but when this happened, she she was a stay-at-home mom at the time. And because I was having a hard time driving and staying in the truck cuz you're not gonna make any money getting out of the truck all the time, man. I mean, and that's what I was doing. That's because my back started hurting. I'd have to stop every every hour or so, get out, walk around, get stretch my back, things like that. She ended up picking up a job to to help 
with everything so that way we could still afford our living and everything now I went home for I think it was about eight months maybe nine months don't don't quote me on that it might it might have been nine months and I worked a regular job I, I went back to my roots uh, when I was in high school I, I was a machinist I was getting into the machining trade so I basically went back to that and started doing that for a little while and I can't thank those guys enough either because during this whole pandemic this whole coronavirus thing John and Drew over at Jet Helseth those guys those guys were willing to let me come back over there and work during the whole pandemic because I was off the road because there was no freight so though those guys I, I appreciate everything they've ever done for me too <laughs> Let's, let's, we're getting off topic here. Let's get back to it. When I went off the road, she went back to work. She, she became a school teacher. Well, she was a school teacher before we met. And then she just went back to being a school teacher. Now, she, she is very passionate about it. So she's still doing that. She never, she never quit when I came back on the road. But so anyways, about eight minutes or eight. Oh, listen to me. Blah, blah, blah. About eight months in to me being at home, working at home, maybe nine months, I I ended up finding out that we weren't gonna be able to afford our living because we built our, our home life around the business that I had made in trucking. And in trucking, if you play your cards right, you can make a lot of money. I'm not saying a little bit of money, I'm not saying, eh, I'm saying a lot of money, but you have to be disciplined. You have to do this correctly. And you, it helps to have someone that knows what they're doing like I did after I had failed three or four times to step in and say, hey, I'm gonna show you the right way to do this. So I ended up leaving the machine shop, coming back on the road. Now I was working as a company driver for about, I don't know, about a year and a half when I came back on the road because I just couldn't find the truck and trailer or, or just a truck even that I that I liked and and I was in the process of looking and and I wanted to get you know I wanted to get my skill set back up because I hadn't been in the truck for almost a year so uh what ended up happening I, I drove a company truck for about a year now it was a company four axle truck with a with a stretch RGN which which means that that the trailer will actually stretch out and instead of only having the 30 foot well like I've got you could stretch out to a 50 foot well now my when when I went to get this truck right here this truck that's behind me it, it's it's another thing of, of knowing people and, and being in the right place at the right time because I ended up going back to the company that I was running for at the time, which I'm not going to mention any names because I've got nothing bad to say about them, but I'm no longer there. And I went back there and I, I spoke with one of the lead guys, one of the head guys of the heavy hull department. And we were sitting there talking and he told me, he said, man, you're looking for a truck, right? And I said, yeah. He said, uh, you see that guy down there walking back this way right now? I said, yeah. He said he's he just came in and told us that he's getting ready to retire and he's talking about selling his truck and trailer so i walked out there and i talked to him and asked him if we could go look at this truck and trailer and uh like i said just the right the right place at the right time man i i walked out talked to him for a little bit now for for his own personal reasons for he didn't want the title of the truck to to change names until the first of the of the coming year which i bought it in i bought it in 2019 so he actually didn't give me the titles to this truck and trailer until 2000 2020 january 1st and that was for his own business reasons and again i'm i can't get into that that's his call you know but uh so i bought this this is a 2005 peterbilt 379 four axle truck with I bought the Lydell 50 ton trailer, which is also a three axle. It's two axle and then a flip, but I leave the, I leave the third axle down all the time. I don't, I don't even mess with trying to flip it. Um, 
and I, I got a really good deal on it he he gave me a deal that i don't think i could have ever asked anybody else for man the truck's only got it's got a brand new crate motor uh uh c15 cat six and a quarter which for those of you that don't know what that means that means 625 horse with an 18 speed the trailer is a 2007 lydell known for their lightweight and ri i mean they're rigid as hell it, it's it's a good truck man the the motor the motor itself was a crate motor and when i bought it it only had 200,000 miles on it so i'm i'm very pleased with how that turned out for me but that's that's kind of a backstory on how i got into trucking and how i've made it to where i'm at now and i i ended up coming over here to landstar now and landstar is a very good company they're treating me very well i know you're gonna see on youtube you're gonna see people that have bad feelings about them and everything i'm here to tell you i'm gonna be here for a while i i like this company they they treat me very well i'm paid on time i'm never i'm never worried about if i'm gonna get paid or not as long as my paperwork's in i get paid i when i came into landstar i came in qualified as an i think they rate them at h5 or whatever it is basically i can haul the biggest thing that i can put on top of this trailer so if if a load pops up that's 25 feet wide i can go pick it up now and that's just because from the time that i was at jones to now all i've been doing is working for experience now there there was a year and i don't know how uh how happy my fiance was with it but there was a year that i was only home 26 days out of that year and that's because i was trying to build my experience up basically what i'm trying to get at is the moral of this whole story is there's really no secret or tip on how to get into heavy haul it's just experience you should be out there trying to haul as you know the oversized loads and the big loads if this is your if this is what you're trying to trying to accomplish and you want to do this you should be trying to haul the oversized loads on a flatbed or on a step deck or or at least starting out and getting into a flatbed or a step deck because open deck is where you have to start you have to start on the flatbed stuff or on on the step deck stuff you can't just walk into a company and become ceo that day unless you know your parents own the company but it's it's the same concept with trucking you're not just going to come out here and make big money and do big loads and stuff right out the gate you need experience so the moral of the story is get out there and get you some experience if you want to get doing this but as for now man i've got another video coming out at the end of this week it'll be this load i'm finishing up so if you guys want to see that make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you ring that notification bell you guys will be notified when that video comes out so anyways now you guys know a little bit about me a little bit about my backstory and that's just that's just how it happens man experience 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 but as for now man i'm gonna go grab something to eat so i will see you all in the next one